Now, last time we talked about uh, the basic transmission line setup and when we would need to use it. And the basic drawing looks a little bit like this. So this is the scenario that we will continue to look into. We have a generator on one end. There's some kind of impedance associated with it. Then that goes into this thing called a transmission line that we're going to talk about more. And then on the other side is a load. So uh, in a real life example, this would be your power generator. This could be a transmission line that goes really far away. And this would be the load on the other side of the home. And the load will experience some corresponding voltage. Now, if you think back to our past discussion, there's an equivalent circuit for a small segment of the transmission line. Uh, if we define this direction as Z in terms of location, uh, we have a circuit equivalent that has an, a series inductor resistance and a shunt capacitor and a resistance. And if we assume the system is lossless and do a few substitutions uh, towards the end of uh, the prior discussion, we came up with this relationship where the second derivative of the voltage with respect to position is equal to LC times the second derivative with respect to time of V. And also we have something similar for uh, the current I. And when we look at the solution, if we define it as a generic forward propagating wave and a backward propagating wave, uh, if we say that the, the voltage is a forward propagating wave and that's going to be some function of T minus Z over VP and a backward propagating wave, uh, V minus, uh, we used G to signify the backward propagating wave at velocity VP. Uh, we, can, we can define that a general solution would take this form where you have a forward wave and a backward wave. And the key thing, the other key thing that I want you to remember before we dive into further discussion is the way Ohm's law is applied. So the relationship between the forward propagating voltage and the forward propagating current is going to be V plus over Z naught, F of T minus Z over VP. So you just have a standard Ohm's law relationship for the forward propagating wave. But because the backward propagating wave involves uh, uh, the current going in the backward direction, the negative Z direction, would actually have an opposite sign. So instead of just dividing it by Z naught, if it's a backward propagating wave, you also have to change the sign. So Z naught, don't forget, you have to have this minus sign over here uh, when, you're, when you're converting between voltage and current. So again, keep in mind, if you have the voltage, you want to find the current, you can just divide by Z naught, where Z is naught is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. But if you're looking at a backward propagating wave, a wave going in, in, uh, in this direction, then you have to make sure that you add this negative sign in here. So, uh, so let's start by the purpose of this particular section is to just introduce the concept of what exactly happens with the transmission line at the generator end. And then later on, we'll talk about what happens on the, on the load side. But this, this is kind of one of the key concepts of, the, of transmission lines. Uh, the first concept that that I'd like you to see is the equivalent circuit that the generator sees. So one analogy that I like to think for a transmission line is that as far as a generator is concerned, the transmission line is like the situation where you have a really long tunnel. So if you have a really short tunnel and you're driving up to it, you basically just see what's on the other side. And so any, any car that goes into a very short tunnel you have a short tunnel, the car goes in, the car basically comes out, right? But um, what if you had a, what if you ended up having a, a really, really long tunnel? Then what do you see? Well, uh, if, if I had a car and I just came up to it, 
I will basically, if the tunnel's long, it's dark, all I'm going to see is just this entry, right? Just the entrance of the tunnel. I don't see anything that's going on the other side because it's so dang far away. And so this, that's kind of what happens here, is as the, as the generator turns on, uh, if we're talking about a DC voltage, what it actually sees over here, because this is so far away, all it sees is this Z naught. And so if you want to look at the voltage, if you want to look at the voltage over here, V in, so we'll just call this V plus, which is the initial voltage going in, that is actually going to be a voltage divider between the source impedance and not ZL, but the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So that is going to be your voltage going in to the transmission line. So how do we calculate that? That really is the only thing that we're doing different as far as figuring out what voltage goes into the transmission line is the fact that we don't see what's on the other end. So it doesn't really matter what's hooked up here. As far as the generator is concerned at T equals zero plus, so just right when you turn it on, if everything is uncharged, uh, something else we'll talk about later, all it sees is this Z naught. And so the initial voltage going in, so V in, is going to be equal to what I'll denote as uh, V plus, the forward wave is going to be, and uh, we're not gonna just have this F of T Z minus, uh, F of T minus Z over VP. And in this case, we're just looking at a DC signal to start with. So what's the amplitude of this DC signal? It's going to be the voltage at the generator and we do this voltage divider. So that's going to be Z naught over Z naught plus ZG. So this is the first thing that we need is uh, we turn it on and we and if everything's uncharged, we say, okay, what what's the initial voltage that goes into this transmission line? And that's this value here. And then separately, we also want to know what the current is. So what's the initial current going in? What's the relationship? Well, remember, our rule right now is that if it's uh, going in the positive Z direction, you just divide by Z naught. If it's in the negative direction, you have to divide by negative Z naught. In this case, we're only looking at this first wave going in. And so the initial input current is going to be V plus over Z naught. And so the initial voltage going in is going to be this this V plus that you found here, you just divide it by Z naught uh, with no sign change. And so that is, that is the voltage that's going to go in. Uh, one other thing that I'll introduce here is uh, if, we, if we look at it, so if you look at what happens to the voltage as a function of position, where this is the generator, uh, this is one side of the transmission line, this is the other side of the transmission line, let's say the length is D. So let's just say that this length over here is D. Then at T equals zero, you're gonna have this V plus going in. And then as time goes on, it's gonna to continue to go this way. Again, where this is a situation where the transmission line is so long, we have to deal with the fact that it doesn't just instantaneously go to the other side. So uh, if, if, you know, if, if, you, if you look at this voltage as like a, a tidal wave uh, and you just put yourself in, in the transmission line over here as some you know, unsuspecting person, uh, this, this is a very, this is a very large voltage coming at you, but note that at the, when we're thinking about transmission line theory, uh, this person doesn't get washed over immediately. So it, it actually takes some time to get there. Um, so the one thing to remember uh, that to pre-introduce here is how long does it take to get to the other side uh, to where the load is? If this length is D, um, the amount of time that we'll say it takes to get to the other side, which I'll call capital T, would be D divided by the propagation speed. Right, so VP. So also keep that in mind. That's something else that you'll have to calculate. Where VP again? Let's remember our relationship. It's a, it's a, it's the square root of one over LC, depending on the type of the transmission line. 